Good morning guys, welcome back. It's Sunday morning, it's going to be hot today. It's supposed to be like 95 to 100 degrees, so I'm not sure how much I'll actually get done today. But my plan was to get the work VSX9s over from my house to the shop, back on the Sentry, and actually drive the Sentry for the first time since I put it away for winter storage back in November, seven months ago. I haven't driven that car in seven months. That's the problem with New Hampshire and the Northeast in general when you're into cars. You have to storm for the winter if you don't want them subjected to the salt. Just pulled back in the driveway, got Dunkin' Donuts with an iced coffee. Treating myself on a Sunday morning. Yeah, gonna load the wheels up here in the Q45, head over to the shop, and hopefully get a chance to drive the Century uh, before it's too brutally hot out. Uh, Cause it's gonna get there today, for sure. So I rode my bike all day yesterday. Uh, met up with Corey and then with our friend Matt and went and rode the new Salem, Massachusetts skate park. And it's actually really good. There's a really good bowl. It's a really smooth concrete park. And then we rode the old Peabody Mass skate park, uh, which I hadn't ridden in probably 12 years or more. And uh, we put a full day in at like 90 degrees out and just punished our bodies. Uh, as we speak now this morning, I am just head to toe, super, super sore. And if you know me, you know that I made a, I had a career in BMX. I mean, I rode professionally for almost eight years back in my 20s and then took about 10 years off. Barely rode my bike for 20 minutes every third month, maybe. You know, like I basically stopped riding for 10 years. And last year, I got back on it pretty aggressively. Corey and I rode every single weekend last year. I even did a cross-country trip with my bike and, and just relearned almost everything. Tail whips, bar spin, the foot jams. Uh, lots of the nose wheelie variation tricks and, and just really got back into it. But what I did last year was I rebuilt my old signature frame. This was a frame that I designed when I was riding for a company called Versa. And we unveiled it at Interbike in Vegas in 2008. And there's actually a BMX Plus magazine somewhere that has a photo of me holding the frame at Interbike. And this frame had sat on the wall for years because that company went under at the end of 2008, beginning of 2009. And I rode for volume after that. And then I started riding for Deco, which is Chad DeGroote's company from 2010 to 2011 or so before I kind of stopped riding full time. Some more serious injuries and some past injuries were just lingering. And I could tell that there was a shelf life with riding a bike. And uh, I was getting more into cars too and realized that the money I was making off of BMX, that, which was barely enough to pay my bills, wasn't enough to dive into an automotive uh, passion. Uh, or anything like that. So I kind of slowed down to BMX stuff, got a regular job, and um, really started focusing on car stuff more. But last year when I decided to start riding again, I had no like sponsor obligations. I didn't have to ride a volume frame or a deco frame. So I pulled my signature frame off the wall, stripped it down, got it powder coated, and rebuilt it up because I was super excited to ride a frame that I designed from scratch. So excited. So all last summer felt amazing because I was rediscovering an old, an old passion, an old sport that I was, I was so invested in back years ago, but on a frame that I designed from scratch, the head tube angle, the overall length, the standover height, the rear stays length, like everything is exactly the way I wanted it back in 2007, 2008 when I designed it. The bummer part, the reason why I bring this up now, the bummer part is yesterday on a double peg up rail to bar spin. I'm pretty sure this was the culprit trick yeah. now it's hard. nice yo that did not sound good no I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what's happening but i can't did you get that clip yeah <laughs> i cracked the frame i cracked it and it's in a spot where you always crack frames and it's right at the bottom tube to the head tube gusset and you can see it right here right there all the way across so huge bummer there um obviously fixable right but that's it about the bmx uh hopefully you can get that fixed soon and can get back riding gonna load the work vs x9s up into the queue and head over to the shop
So for those of you who have been on the channel and followed me on Instagram for quite a while now, you'll know a bunch about the Century and you'll know a bit about uh, the wheels I'm running now. If you've seen previous episodes, you kind of know what the car is and how rare this car actually is. Uh, but these are 18 inch 1997 uh, Work VSX 9s. And these particular wheels came in from Japan. Uh, I've refurbished them, I've stripped the faces down, powder coated them. The uh, center caps underneath the hex cap are two piece and they are also aluminum. So I was able to uh, powder coat them and match everything. So it's not like they were plastic and I had to somehow match it with paint. Uh, new lips all around. Uh, and what I was doing was I was really looking for a set of work Emmett's wheels. Now the work Emmett's wheels were basically designed around the Century OEM wheel, as were the Desmond Versus. And when I first finished this car, I ran a set of Desmond Versus, uh, three-piece Versus, on the Century, and it looked great, but they were 17s. And 17s with small tires are just too small for how big and giant this car is. So the overall goal was to go to Emmett's. I didn't really want to build the Desmonds up to 18s, uh, I love work as like a wheel company. I've just always liked their aesthetics, the logos, the branding. I've just liked work wheels. So I really wanted to find a set of 18 inch Emmets. But every set I kept coming across were rebuilt and I wanted way too much money for them and they were set up for like giant bolt on wide body type cars and had five inch lips and all that. And I need an OEM style spec wheel uh, to fit underneath the car, underneath the Century. So with Ocean City, the unofficial H2O fast approaching last fall, I decided to go with these Work VSX9s because I just, I just found them and said, you know, they're a great looking wheel, I'll just run them. So as I've mentioned on Instagram a handful of times, I think what I want to do is continue to search for a set of Emmett's wheels in the right offsets or that need a little bit of work to get to the right offsets on a Century and put the Work VSX9s on the Q45. I haven't tested with them on the Q yet, and I've been itching to do so, but I'm waiting for coilovers on the Q, and unfortunately, uh, the D2 coilovers for the Q45 are two months out, so it won't be until like the end of July or beginning of August till I can get a pair of those, or a set of those. And the reason why I'm deciding to go with D2 is because Bag Riders is a D2 distributor, and I can go through Bag Riders to get a set of D2s, and so that's kind of what I'm waiting on. I originally wanted to go air in the Q, but since I've been dailying it, I'd really like to just have it lowered on coils, super easy, super easy install, and easy just day-to-day -day driving. So this is a great catalyst to go into talking about the sponsor of this episode. And that, to me, blows my mind just saying that. I know on the podcast and a few other YouTube episodes, I've talked about projects that I'm working on that both Bag Riders, Airlift Performance, Rotiform, ECS Tuning, a handful of other companies that I've worked with um, that have come on as sponsors of, of not just the YouTube, but uh, the cars themselves. So it's been kind of a tangible thing that I've worked with companies on, you know, as far as the cars themselves. But I'm proud to announce that I'm working with the good boys at Wheel Price on the YouTube channel now. And if you're like me and you've been around for quite a bit, you've seen all the different avenues of buying and selling wheels come and go on the internet. Wheel Price makes it super easy to just window shop, buy, sell, or even trade your wheels. And what's awesome is, is they've put a bunch of IT work into an app too. So not only is there a website, but you can download the actual wheel price app on both iPhone and Android devices, which is awesome because we're all buried in our phones all day long anyway. And what's super awesome about this app is you can search any type of criteria, really. You can search for your bolt pattern, you can search for the manufacturer of the wheel, you can search for like price-based, you know, what you wanna spend, but you can also search for location. If you're not trying to spend money on shipping wheels or having wheels shipped or anything like that, you can kind of like, almost like on Zillow, circle an area and look in that vicinity to see what's for sale. Or at the very least, when you find a set of wheels that you want, on the page of the listing of the wheels shows you where those wheels are located. I think it's a great thing that they're doing because it allows guys like us to go to one source. I mean, I don't know how many times I've checked Craigslist, Marketplace, forums all in one night when I'm searching for a set of wheels. Notably, work Emmett's for the century. So wheel price is now like in the process of growing more and more people in their online community. And I think it's a great thing that they're doing. So head to your app store on your phone, whether or not you've got an iPhone or an Android device and download the wheel price app, it's free. 
So I want to really thank those guys for coming on board and being a part of what I'm doing here and what you guys are doing. I mean, they're basically giving this amazing product to the community where we can now search for hard to find things in one area. It's far too hot to wash the car, so the car is pretty filthy. I haven't washed it since I put it away for winter storage last November. It's big, it's black, it's just, it's just too hot to wash it out here today. I'm not going to be out with it too long just because it is brutally hot out here today, but I'm going to take it for its first spin and uh, maybe grab a coffee or something. realize how much I really enjoyed owning this car and driving it when you put it away for seven months out of the year six months on average but this past year I, I haven't pulled it out until June 1st so November all the way through May so I just grabbed a coffee and, oh I'm going by local sign temperature right now 95 degrees but I wanted to lay this out just kind of do a walk around talk about the car a little bit in the shade so I think I'm gonna go up to my parents house uh, they've got a paved driveway with some shade, so that's where I'm headed right now. Um, so the car doesn't sit exactly where I want it to right now. When I built the suspension, I originally built it so it would lay flat out. And up front, I am laid out. The engine cradle and control arm mounts touch the ground. Uh, but right now, what's holding the rear up are the factory air shocks. Well, I shouldn't say factory. The factory air shocks were adjustable and they ran off of a sensor. There was like a height sensor on the diff. and. It was basically like the old OEM self-leveling systems where if you put a bunch of luggage or people in the back, it would auto level. So I got rid of all that now that it's on its own air suspension, but the factory air shocks, even though they're aftermarket, they're the factory length, they don't collapse as far as I need them to. So although I designed the suspension range of motion and airbag brackets uh, to go all the way to the ground, uh, I, even, I even notched the floor so the diff and the yoke could travel up into the body a little bit more. I didn't cut a lot of stuff, I just relocated some things, uh, allowed for more range of motion. 
but since I've got those shocks in right now, uh, it rakes out a little bit when it's aired out. Uh, I just haven't had the time to build custom or order custom built uh, shorter shocks with the correct uh, extended height and the ex in the uh, shortened collapsed height that I need in order to lay the car out. So by the time Ocean City came around for the unofficial H2O, and in that same trip we went down to Chattanooga for Riverside last fall, um, I didn't have time to get shocks built and I wasn't gonna drive around without shocks. Without the shocks, it lays exactly where I want it to. It airs right out. That's the only thing that's keeping it up right now. Well, it was awesome taking the Century out. I mean, I've said it plenty of times, probably in this episode too, that I just absolutely love still owning this car. It took so long to find one. I'd say almost 10 years I, I looked for one. So as with all my other cars, I always ride the roller coaster of, of should I sell it? Should I not sell it? And this is part of my income. So buying and selling cars is part of the whole deal. Uh, but when it's out of sight, out of mind, you fall in love with it all over again when you finally see it again. And uh, yeah, going for its first drive of the year, uh, it's no exception. I'm, kind of head over heels for this car again. Well, that'll do it for this episode, guys. Tires have just arrived today for the Epsilons on the Corvair. So tomorrow I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna get the rears pulled again. I've gotta do new valve stems on the other three wheels. A few episodes ago, I, I did one because the valve stem was broken, uh, but then realized that I was down past the wear bars, almost into steel on the rear tires. So looking forward to getting that out and driving it as well. And just starting to tidy up all the cars. They've been stored for so long now, all winter long. I want to say thanks to all the guys at Wheel Price again. Really appreciate all of their support and coming on board with this whole circus. And thank you guys for your support and for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode.